Hello everyone, hello YouTube. So this video uh, was filmed in two pieces. This video is very, would be very helpful for people who tend to equal their to-do list to what they're worth in life. People who lost any joy in life. People who just go about their lives feeling numb. And I know I share a lot of insights in this video, so I highly recommend you reflecting on that, taking notes, and really applying it to your life. And if you watch this video till the end, um, you're gonna get a lot of value for yourself. And if you really want to feel life, to live life in full, to enjoy every moment, please listen to this video till the end. Comment down below, comment and reconstruct what you've heard and what you're taking for yourself. And I know I'm sharing a lot of things in this video, a lot of insights and a lot of thoughts. But because I'm so passionate, it's something that I'm going through, the transformation I'm going through right now as well. And enjoy the video. Let me know what you think. And we're rolling. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my wisdom vlog. Uh, my name is Julia Dars, and thank you so much for joining this video. I was thinking about a different topic for this vlog, but since I'm kind of going through a very difficult, painful time, also very transformative, transformative time, I thought that there will be, this would be a better fit. Uh, this topic would be a better fit for this video. As you see, I literally just came back from the gym. I'm still wearing my hoodie and I decided that I want to share this with other people because that will definitely resonate with a lot of you, maybe your friends. Um, and it's interesting how everything is connected. As you may have noticed in your life, your decisions, your choices, they have consequences. So right now, I'm going to start with what I'm working right now and what I'm going through and then uh, what I think led to it and what caused it. Just uh, not long time ago, I experienced a very severe pain in my stomach to the point where I thought I'm going to call 911. Uh, I didn't have any painkillers at home. I usually don't take them. I kind of, uh, you know, never actually experienced this type of pain. Um, I think that was like a long time ago, five or six years ago, maybe even more in Brooklyn when I used to live in New York and that's where I had um, ulcers and uh, gastritis and also H. pylori. That's kind of the same type of pain that I experienced uh, recently. So, you know, I thought like, oh, well, it's just uh, something. I maybe ate something or whatever, you know, like it's a body and sometimes just certain things happen and it's okay. But then it started happening more regularly and then every day. And then to the point where I could not even go anywhere or do anything or walk because the only one position that my stomach and upper abdomen would not hurt if I sit down on a couch with my legs up. So I thought, okay, uh, and I'm from Belarus. Uh, you probably already know that. I'm kind of very, I have a very uh, high threshold for the pain. But I thought, okay, so that's, this is not the pain that I want to sustain or I want to like experience. And this is totally not the pain that you just uh, kill with painkillers. You've got to go to the doctor. Uh, a story before this story is... In September, and I haven't made any separate video about this, uh, probably should, it also would help a lot of people. In September, I went back to Belarus and I decided just to do like a regular checkup and I'm guilty, uh, I confess, I haven't done any checkups with doctors because I was moving from South Carolina to Los Angeles, from New York to South Carolina to Los Angeles to, to Texas. And I kind of didn't have time to, to go to the doctor, you know, 
it's usually how it, how it goes. We think that everything is fine. There's no pain. I'm okay, right? And it's totally false mindset because you should. And when I was coaching people in fitness, I was always saying twice a year, you should go to the doctor, check on yourself, especially, especially especially after things like uh, COVID, uh, vaccines, you know, all this kind of stuff. We don't know how the body will react to it. So I neglected um, the, the, the one thing that I always recommend my, to my client. And um, in September, going back to the story, I went back to Belarus and I decided to do that because it's very uh, cheap over there to do the entire blood test. So if you have any relatives or any friends in Europe, go there. Uh, definitely, definitely saves a lot of money. So I did all the ultrasounds for my internal organs and everything was fine, great. And then my doctor all of a sudden, I remember I was walking with my cousin, we were talking and it was like Sunday night and she called me saying, Julia, I want you in the hospital right now because you're in a critical condition. And I was like, what? I'm in a critical condition? What are you talking about? I feel great. I feel better than I felt ever in my life. Yeah, there were certain things and only after the fact I found out what were those symptoms about but so I went to the uh, and I was looking at my blood test and because I already had results and the uh, the hemoglobin a1c was quite high and I thought well well I experienced a lot of stress recently I also had very stressful uh, travel to to um, Belarus, very long one. We also had quite a big meal on Saturday, uh, on Thursday, I think, uh, and I went to do my blood test on Friday. So I'm like, that's probably this thing. And I kind of didn't pay attention to, to be honest. I didn't pay attention, although I used to read blood tests, but honestly, it just never crossed my mind. So I ended up going to the hospital in the morning, uh, Monday morning, and uh, the doctor was talking to me and she's like, do you know that, do, are you familiar with a, like a di diabetic coma? And I'm like, diabetic? Like what? And she's like, yeah, like based on your results, you have diabetes. It shook my entire world. Because I certainly, at that point realized that this is not the type two diabetes because usually you gain a lot of weight with type two diabetes, right? I, on the other hand, I lost a lot of weight. I lost a lot of weight. And honestly, I was kind of happy about it. I'm like, oh great, you know, I blamed everything on the hot weather in Austin, me working out, not really eating. So I'm like, cool, I'm, I look great. But then I had some concerns because I technically could see all the bones on my back. But I don't see my back that often, you know, so it didn't bother me as much. And I ended up in the hospital. Uh, they couldn't really tell which, what type of diabetes it is it because there's one, uh, there's diabetes one, there's uh, diabetes LADA, which is 1.5, and type two diabetes. But I kind of knew that it's one. Uh, the, the symptoms were the same. And then I kind of put two and two together. I'm like, oh, here we go. Cramps in my calves at night, uh, constant thirst, a very low energy, lethargic. Uh, a, a, a lot of like, like crave, craving sweets and I could care less about sweets and I was like crazy about sweets like recently so H, um, H1, a, a, hemoglobin A1c is basically the accumulation of sugar over three last three months and I'm like well that makes sense um, but I still couldn't wrap my head around why, why me? Like, how is that? Like, I am working out, I'm eating healthy. And obviously a lot of DMs that I was like, wow, people. They're like, you see, even you with all your healthy lifestyle got this. I'm like, so what are you looking an excuse to not to do this? You know, like maybe if I didn't work out, maybe I, if I didn't actually had a better like food choices in my life, that would be worse. So. 
I, I don't know. We we can't really tell, right? By now. So I ended up in the hospital. My entire life uh, paused on that po- on that time. I when she said that I was close. So my 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 measurements were or my uh, test came out to twenty two point nine, I think, and diabetes coma happened at thirty. And she's like, just if you haven't, you know, uh, figured this thing out right now, you could have just like pa- like pass out somewhere. And she goes and like, you know, not a lot of people come out of that situation. So technically she was saying you're kind of very close to be dead or you were close to be dead. And you know how this, like this, the, a lot of transformative practices use, um, they use death as the motivator for the person to kind of wake up, right? So because we're approaching death, there's like, this not, this, it's inevitable. So to, for the person to actually start feeling the life, appreciating the life. And I really felt it. I really felt it. I was like, oh my God. Um, I started thinking, and obviously your subconscious mind, and I am working a lot of the subconscious mind with my body. It gave me the answer right away. I experienced so much stress. I also was reading you know, certain facts uh, in Mount Sinai the hospital uh, websites. They were saying that people right now in their 30s, and mind you, I do not have anyone with diabetes in my, lo- in my family, no one. So obviously this is not like genetic thing. It could not just open up all of a sudden when I'm 30. And um, I started reading this thing and a lot of papers say that after COVID, you know, and it, it could just change the DNA sequence after, you know, vaccines, COVID, you know, who, who knows. Um, it, all of a sudden in combination, like people just come uh, to the hospital with type one diabetes. Um, at first, I'm going to tell you, I was shocked and I couldn't really realize what's happening. But then I kind of caught myself on the thought of like, well, you have a choice right now. You have a choice to play the victim card, you know, cry out. And I cried. I did cry. It, I, I did. I was in my uh, room alone there in the hospital, literally crying. Um, because that's the emotion <laughs> that I experienced. And I was very sad and upset and uh, all kind of different thought came to my head, you know, like death and how I'm not going to be able to have kids with this thing. I was really, really, really crushed at that moment. But then I thought, well, you know, what, what is, is it showing to you? Because technically, um, autoimmune diseases every very difficult like heart disease on your body could happen only if you very stressful and stressful not where you're like stressful just a little bit and it made me open my eyes i really thought that i'm very good at stress management i really thought that i'm i'm really enjoying my life and i did you know but then sometimes i go to this deep like tunnel vision uh, in a fog where I don't prioritize my life and just to enjoy the life. I don't, the joy of life. I don't prioritize just going outside, meeting friends. I prioritize my work. And it happened to that I love my work. I love what I do. I love helping people. I love sharing my wisdom. I love sharing, you know, things that I've discovered with my clients and how I help them. I really love it. And I I found out that I really was so, like, up until my eyeballs in this thing that I forgot to leave. The stress was very high. There was um, somebody broke into my car and stole a very difficult, difficult, very expensive equipment that I had there. Yeah, obviously my fault, I know, uh, leaving some, something like this. And then, you know, I found it because I, I said, hey God, I promise you, whatever you want me to do in this life, I'll do it uh, because I also was at the point working for the agency that was consuming all my time. So I couldn't do what I love, funny. 
um, and I said, hey, if you if you just help me find this machine, I would I would do what what you send me to this planet, to this world to do. And I found the machine when I came back after I prepared my glass in the car, uh, in some sort of a corridor with doors. I'm like, wow, really? So that also, even it was a very positive thing, but the positive stress is also stress. So after that, I uh, I kind of lost that job because I was all stressed out, and you know, I'm grateful that this this happened. Um, because I'm that way. I'm like, I'm going to see it until they do the, the move. Lesson learned. Um, and then I start dating a guy. It was also a wounded relationship in a way. Um, I was in that fog of love, you know, that kind of like I was always high. Uh, because the machine, because of all of that, and now I'm, uh, I lost the job, so I need to get out of the apartment, but I already signed the lease for one year. And I didn't want to stay in that complex because I was constantly thinking about somebody just breaking in into my door. I lost my sleep. I was kind of high. I was stressed and high on the same time and dating this guy and he works at night. So I was out all the time, very late because I kind of wanted to connect and learn more about him. And also I was that kind of like, whoa, that's it. And that's one, that's another part. And this is a topic that I initially wanted to tell you about the scenario. So how to spot that. So that would be the topic for the next vlog. But I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be my husband, you know? Um, yeah, I used to do that. So all of that, what happened, I had to move. I had to also uh, find a, a roommate out of Facebook. And I was like terrified by the idea that I'm going to move to the apartment with someone I don't know, how is that going to happen? But when the live said, yo, you need to move tomorrow, honestly, I found the person in literally one hour. I said, I'm moving in, boom, done, you know? So like the decision making phase, you know you have to do this. Do not put this aside because crisis, what is crisis? Crisis is when you know you have to take action, but you can postponing it all the time, all the time. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. And that's what the crisis is. It's just to postpone decisions. And now you're like in this pile of shit and you don't know what to do. But then life throws the uppercut in your face and you're like, all right, got it. I'll do that. Okay. Okay. No worries. So that was me. So everything, like everything, and then I was, you know, planning on going back to Belarus. That was on its own, very stressful. Uh, so I, I started just overthinking stuff. I, I started to, to, to leave and we broke up with a partner, with, with that boy, boyfriend, and that broke my heart. Before we broke up, I realized that I have, because I was feeling kind of on myself with, next to him, doing or even thinking stuff that weren't really my thoughts. And that's where the program, the beliefs, right? Where that they, they come. I believe that's something that I, that's my own experience that I developed this, this scenario. It's not the generational program. Those are just a little bit different. Um, but I, I experienced that enough times to kind of follow that scenario all the time. Also, so, so when I found out that I have kind of very uncomfortable feeling in my body, like I wasn't really comfortable in my skin. I was also, um, trying to pick up words. What should I say? I also was asking about the same shit over and over again asking, are you okay with this? I spotted this thing and I said, hey, I need a couple days. I need to figure out certain things. 
and I did neurographic session and oh my god boy oh boy how many things I discovered from that session the topic was about they don't choose me and then I realized that well that, that's that's really not about this it's it's about my dad my relationship with my dad he wasn't emotionally available wasn't really uh, saying that he's proud of myself so yada 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 I was trying to find this in the partner whatever my dad never gave me so all of that is just like a lot and I was so stressed I was so upset my brain was trying to just you know put it together so it would be safe for me anyway fast forward I'm in Belarus diabetes and I think that's exactly what caused it because when you constantly in the stress your cortisol levels are so high your body also needs and you you have adrenaline there are two um, hormones or mean, uh, neuromediators adrenaline and noradrenaline so noradrenaline with uh, cortisol way hey, yeah good you know like that's where you're like let's go adrenaline is where it's like you running away from the predator um, or like you see the predator that will be like oh my god that's like that's adrenaline because you're like that's bear and like you so but when you take action that's where they change a little bit the the hormones change and that's where you actually kind of it, it is a good stress like but you kind of made the decision to do certain things so I guess for me uh, metaphorically speaking I didn't have an action plan because everything kind of was just like wow so also and the cortisol you know always high uh, adrenaline and then you have your body that needs glucose so it's kind of trying to generate that um, you know like an, a breakdown glycogen and have gl more glucose so it's going to be elevated all the time so here we go like you see like just stress causes a lot of stuff and uh, I was pretty lost. I'm like, well, what should I do? Where should I go? Uh, how should I do, like, how should I create my life now? So that everything was just all together. And when I came back from Belarus, you know, I was like, fuck it. I'm just gonna do butterflies and unicorns. And that felt very good. So I'm that person, hero to hero to zero to hero, right? Zero to hero. I either like grinding or like Bleh, don't do this this thing, and it's not good. And that's what I discovered recently. And I think my stomach pain came exactly on time, and the the health system rings the bell the last. So before you can see different signs. Um, I don't know, like your tire all of a sudden had a hole or, you know, you bump your knees everywhere or like, you, you know, you, like just, just your physical body. Uh, certain things that just like, they don't kind of go together, like they don't align, like every, something super small just happens all the time. Sign number one. Sign number two would be um, relationship that will hate that system of relationship. Like just have little fights, small fights with everything. Like, like all of a sudden friends may not call you or like invite you somewhere or you have with your significant other. Then uh, money, you know, you could experience certain losses. They could be very small, but they were, they're going to be there. And then the, the, the last one, what like universe and like everything, just like, bam, is your health. So that's what happened to me. And I'm sitting, you know, after the Belarus, just to, to finish up the thought, I was like all oh, butterflies, ah, 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 ah. I choose my niche uh, finally, and I'm super pumped. The content is coming together super easily. Everything is kind of going great. And here we go again. And I'm like, I moved to the new apartment. I'm like, okay, so I do not understand why is my body, and that could be like the post factum effect of the uh, constant uh, high sugar. But I'm like, nah, that's not it. That doesn't resonate with me in my body. There's something else. And that's the insight that changed my life. Not, you know, like obviously everything led to this, is that I really bonded my worth 
with things I'm doing, with being good in content creation, with being good coach, with doing more, with learning more, with improving, with reading books, you know, and it, it's good. It's good at one point because I always have new tools for my clients. I always have amazing things in my program that are working so efficiently, so fast. But at the same time, I realized that this is only one thing that in my head right now. Neglected relationship with self, neglected relationship with life, neglected all of the systems, and I was just concentrating on one. And thinking, well, why am I not experiencing any joy in my life? Because my subconscious, think of your subconscious like your inner child, right? It kind of wants ice cream, but it wants ice cream for yourself for itself, not for somebody else, right? So the work of coaching is, it's both ways, absolutely. That's why I do a lot of interviews or like a call with, uh, before we start working with the client because sometimes we're just not a good fit and I want to have, you know, pleasure working with my people and my clients also want to have the same, you know, uh, experience while working with me. So just figuring out that part, but it's still giving. Content, Instagram, it's also giving. Work is giving. And I'm like, and I, it feels like I'm standing on the same spot, just pushing harder, and something is just holding me. And I'm holding, and I'm like pushing, pushing, pushing. I'm pushing more. I'm way stronger now, but nothing is happening. It's like I'm receiving the same results. I'm doing more. The results are the same. Well, okay, what's wrong? And that's where the pain, the stomach pain came uh, to my attention and that slowed me down. So I stopped everything, all the courses I had, like business stuff, um, certain things that I, uh, like the couple projects that I was working on, I literally stopped everything. And I'm like, this is bullshit and this is not the way to go. And when I realized that I can't even sit down and be lazy because I'm not doing anything. Am I a good human being? Everything honestly comes also from parenting. So I think my, uh, what I've discovered, working through um, this kind of challenges with my dad, I wanted detention from my dad. I thought subconsciously, if I will be doing something, if I will be, you know, better at things and accomplish things and like make more money, then my dad would say, you were a good girl. And that made me so sad. I'm like, wow, I'm literally just, I was wasting a lot of my life just for that. So I'm going to tell you what I've done. And if that resonates with you, please comment down below. This is what I did. I, <laughs> it's going to sound very funny. I decided not to go to the gym because that was an abuse. I was abusing my body. I developed such a strong habit in going to the gym where it's really, I really did not enjoy it. So I decided to literally stop everything. Even even things that I thought bringing me joy. Because now I'm doing them just because for the sake of doing, not for the sake of joy. So for a week, I'm like, I want to recreate a list and meanings, more, even more meanings to the things I, w- I was doing, like walks. I love nature. But over time, I see that I'm working with my phone. I see that I'm recording audios. I see that like, I'm listening to something. I'm not enjoying, like, per se, the, the walk. I'm just doing the walk for the walk, you know? Uh, gym, I stopped, I, I literally, I, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to go there anymore. To the point where I remember driving there and my stomach started hurting again. And I'm like, wow, that's how bad it is. So I decided that I'm going to uh, stop things. I'm going to work only four days per week, uh, four hours straight. And sometimes it's a little bit more. And all the rest, I'm going to... Um, do the human being activities. So I wanted to go and do and learn bachata. I'm flying to Miami. So I decided that every month I can go for three, four days and just rest, just travel, rest. I decided that I want to rebuild my uh, relationship with the community. I mean, friends, coffees, lunch, you know, just 
re rebuild that kind of area. I decided that I'm going to be building my relationship with my dad. And now it's, uh, it's actually an exercise that I give also my clients. You can, say, you can have it. 30 days straight, I'm either texting my dad or, or uh, I'm calling him and I'm being a daughter. I'm not being his mom or I'm not being just his friend. I'm being his daughter. Um, the same I'm doing with my mom, just in a different way. Well, my mom, I, I worked on that a lot uh, recently. And I'm just tr literally feel, I feel like this is the, the, the just the next level of me. It's... It's not a new me. Like people, when I, when people say it's new me, it's kind of, to me at least, it sounded like oh, finally I disregarded my old self. So to me, it's like the upgraded version. It's like it has all me in the past, but also a new level of me, a new um, new stage. I literally feel it. I feel that it's still kind of opening up just a bit more every day. I'm still observing it. Every day that it's more of an expansion, but also very gentle one, also very nurturing one. Because honestly, I felt very bad about myself, not treating myself as, you know, a human being, as just go and have an experience, just enjoy things. Um, I also noticed that a lot of the times when I went out, it was about like transaction, like not like money transaction, but like, oh, let me find people who would kind of be helpful in business or we can collaborate, right? Instead of just going and like meeting people, you, you don't have to be transactional. And it wasn't like this all the time, but I see that the pattern, the cycle kind of repeating itself. Again, I, I, will, I will do the, the different video for the cycle, how to spot that and what to do with that. So it's really unknown for me right now, right? And what is the change? The change is unknown. You cannot know what's gonna happen because if you do, that's known. That's something that you've done. Like you can't, with the, the current mindset and way of thinking, you cannot transform because the current mindset and current thinking is who you are right now. It feels like you're standing on the top of a cliff, like on the edge, and you're about to jump. That's how it feels. Your brain goes nuts because it's like, no, wait a second. But this is what I promised myself. I'm going to do, I'm going to say yes to life, and I'm going to do things that scares the shit out of me. And I know everybody does this re resolution, but do they? Do you really do this or you just say you do this? Like changing your coffee um, creamer is not the same thing. Really scary thing. Really stop doing everything you, you were doing and just like, you know, wipe it out. And do not try to rush to replace it because that's not gonna work because you're gonna, do, you're gonna be more anxious about this. Try to stay in empty. Try to stay with nothing. I, have, I haven't read a book, uh, Die With Zero, but I think that's probably a content, a content um, context that try to stay naked. Take off your panties, your underwear, everything, and try just to be naked in front of yourself. Try not to, you know, insert as many to-dos in your day as possible to just numb the fact that you are not enjoying your life, right? And this is where my camera stopped filming. So just to recap and just to kind of summarize everything I said, uh, when you feel numb in life, when, you, when your body, your health is showing you signs that maybe you're not in the right place, maybe you're doing too many things and you lost meanings, you lost your feelings, you lost your emotions and life just seems like a gray of nothing and you just go through motion. What would... I do it. What am I doing right now? And this is it, funny enough, but 
every time I feel like this, I go back uh, and the way I um, program, I, I made my program for my clients and I just take it, you know, step by step one more time. So I know a lot of people like, well, but you're a coach and you're supposed to know those things or you're supposed to do that. Um, I disagree with this because uh, as, as a human being as well, I experience different things. So I'm super happy that uh, I, I made this program once at life. I just started reflecting and just writing and just collecting all the tools. So number one, if you feel like this, first of all, disconnect, dis like stop doing everything you're doing. Stop uh, just filling your schedule with more things and then you just go through them so fast and so quickly that you don't really enjoy them. So that's what I did. I stopped, well, my body helped me, the pain came, helped me to just stop and just erase everything I was doing and slowly reintroducing those things, but really meaningfully. And what I mean by that is when I walk, I walk. It's a walk, it's a me time, it's a time to reflect, it's a time to see the sky, nature, inhale, you know, breathe and just be there. If you eat, you eat. You don't watch TV, you don't answer emails, you don't look at Instagram, you're eating. You're really internalizing and reflecting on what you're eating, how you're feeling. And that's what happens, why life start, starts feeling like just nothing. And only way you feel alive is when something either bad happens and all of a sudden you feel those emotions. Are you constantly chasing a pattern of maybe some arguments with your partners or with friends? And all that you say about your day is like when you felt something negative. So you stop doing everything and you start recollecting things that you truly like. If there's any activity that you feel like it was just a feeler, just don't do it. Like right now, I reintroduced gym, but I also thought of why am I doing it? I love connecting with my body during the sessions. I already passed that stage where I had to lift heavy, where I had to build my muscles. I already have it, so I just need to maintain. But also, I don't want just maintain. I don't want to just go to the gym for the sake of going. I uh, breathe differently. I reflect on the exercise. I reflect on every each muscle cell that I have. And if I feel like in 20 minutes this is enough, and then if I continue pushing, that actually feels like I'm abusing my body right now, then I stop. If it's 15 minutes, it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. I do the exercises that I like. I do the mobility work. I do some uh, complex exercises, kettlebells or dumbbells, barbells, whatever it is. I can combine three exercises in one. Just have fun there. That was the one. Then dancing, you know, uh, why am I dancing? I love the challenge. When I see a new choreo, I'm like, wow. My brain goes, oh, you're never going to do this. It's super fast. But I stay and I give myself time. And if I feel like today, all I can give is 30 minutes, but I'm truly in those 30 minutes. I'm truly like reflecting on how I feel that it's amazing. Walks, same thing. I reintroduce meditation right now. I wake up and I say gratitude. I say prayers. Thank you that I actually even opened my eyes. Some people wake up or never wake up, you know. I'm grateful that I can walk. And we take so many things just for granted. We take our lives for granted. We take our health for granted. We think that this is something that, you know, we um, just, it's kind of normal. It's what you deserve. But no, think about how many people don't see they don't have that ability. Think that how many people can even hear music. I reintroduced music. Now I'm walking, I'm listening to the music. I'm dancing again. I'm letting my body to kind of sh 
you know, just have those moves. And it's so fun. Think of your friends. How amazing that you have friends. Those people are next to you. Say that you're grateful for them. Just send a text saying, hey, I'm, I'm really grateful that you're in my life. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Or in your partner. Let your community know that you're, you're so thankful for being among those people. Rethink what you do. And rethink how you are being in this moment. Because the high achiever culture pretty much sets us or sets our lives to be that fast pace red racing. But it doesn't have to be like this. We think how many things you can just disregard, stop controlling, you know, the over controlling part where you can really relax because you gotta know what you do. You have to know your schedule. You have to do this. This is one uh, cool exercise. Uh, take it. Just create a day where you literally just have, let's say, three points of destination. I want to go to a great coffee, coffee shop or restaurant or cafe. Um, I also want to maybe go and shop and buy something for myself and enjoy. And then I'm going to go to the movie. But I'm not going to plan it. No planning. I'm just going to go with the flow. And it's, at first, it's going to be scary because if you're a controller, if you're that high achiever, you kind of need to know where you go. But also think about this way, how dreams come true. You set an intention. And then the easiest way for you is just to let God and universe guide you. Let them bring opportunities, bring uh, new options, new ways, new path. You know, let them do this. And your subconscious will reprogram your brain. And now you're going to see that everything comes actually easily. And another exercise that I'm, I'm going to give you here is set the timer or alarm 15 minutes apart the entire day. And every time it rings, you have your journal, for instance, and you just say, "I'm this moment I'm something doing or not doing. And I feel this, 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 or I don't feel. Many people, they're so disconnected with their bodies that they really numb. But you can choose to feel your day with so many beautiful events because life is already happening. It's not on the pause. It's actually happening. And life is not when something great happens or something bad happens and then you just oh yeah oh finally i'm going to vacation but then you so stress about picking controlling about how it's gonna go that when you come to vacation you're already thinking you know about coming back or about the next vacation so boom you just miss the entire experience in life think about it as a photographs life is Really like an album of different photographs when you take. So you woke up, ha, ah, photograph. you smiling, you enjoying. Well, thank you so much. I opened my eyes. Amazing. And I may not feel great as of now, but hey, that's, I'm here. You know, you go to the bathroom. How do you look at the mirror? Are you smiling at yourself? Or are you like, Ugh, you again? Well, another day. Here we go. So that's your choice. And if you condition yourself to just being numb, to just going through motion, of course it's going to be hard. Give yourself some time to change that. Also, people around you will notice that and they may start changing as well. And at first, it would be unknown. At first, it would be so uncomfortable. But remember that that uncomfortability is actually your... Uh, steps towards a better life, towards finally feeling your life, towards actually saying that my day is so filled with journeys, with adventures, because you choose so. Instead of just saying, oh, well, nothing happened. I woke up in the same bed. I, I went to the bathroom. I ate the same breakfast, you know, work, come back. Yeah, that life sounds miserable. But you don't have to be a movie star in the blockbuster to have that life. You just need to change how you feel about it, 
how you feel about yourself. Don't just disregard your life. Don't just think that it's not valuable. And when you have that change, you're going to see how many things happen with you, for you, in your day. And have the journal. Start with writing um, 10 amazing things that happened to me this day. And you know, when I was in Brooklyn and I started doing this, I was like, oh, I remember all bad things. The client was late, how um, like a client missed the session, or I was in the market and there was a person who stepped on my foot. All of those bad things, quote unquote, but not nothing great. And I'm like, wow, that's not good. I, I'm sure I'm just not seeing certain things. And I started just, oh, I heard this bird. It was actually... It's pretty bird. It was chirping all all morning. Oh, I saw kids playing. That was so great. And I all of a sudden I remember how I was playing with my friends and it wore my body, it wore my heart. Oh, I was walking and this wind felt so good. It felt on my skin. I felt everything on my hair. You know, those. And at first, as I said, it will be a little bit difficult, but then you're going to get used to it. And now you're reprogramming your subconscious mind towards seeing beautiful things all day long. And all of a sudden, even those activities, even if you reintroduce them back, all of a sudden they have all different, all different meaning to you. It feels differently. You started feeling again. And this is the, this is the cancer of the modern world. It's just we so trying to fit a lot of things in our day, the to-do list, and then we feel bad about not accomplishing that. And then we think that we don't worth anything. And then when our parents or our friends ask, well, how was your day? All we say is fine or uh, not, not really. That's it. And it's not life. So try to slow down. And you got to do this. I got to say, you got to do this. If you want to change, if you want to, you know, if you want to have that transformation, you have to slow down. Sometimes you really have to stop and just wipe it clean and start the new page, start the new chapter. Because transformation is just like in the gym. When one client comes to, like used to come to me and I was a fitness coach, um, I would say, hey, I'm not taking you for a month because that's just not nothing going to happen. And when we take before and after pictures, and those are your journals, those are your uh, exercises. In my program, uh, what I do with people is we write the, the point A because we need to compare something when in the, uh, after the coaching. And they see the results as the same as when I used to train clients and they took, they, they take their first picture and they're terrified. But then in one year, and that's where usually you're going to see tremendous results. In one year, we do the collage and we compare those two pictures. My clients, like, they used to go, oh, my God, I cannot believe it's me. I, I can't believe that was me. This is so amazing, you know? Same thing with the personal transformation. At first, you're not going to see results. But you're also not going to see them ever if you don't, see, don't notice them. You know, if you devalue everything, if you just say, ah, whatever, you know, ah, doesn't matter what I've done, doesn't matter. That's a self-worth right there. That's speaking about your self-confidence as well. So obviously, where are you going to be? You're not going to feel joy and proud of yourself if you just disregard everything you've done. But that's a habit. Because we're, we're not there and we're never going to be there. Every day we're like, no, we're not there because we need more. We need more. And honestly, ask yourself, is it ever going to be enough? Is your to-do list is going any shorter? I don't think so. So why not to just enjoy the ride? Just to slow down. And all of a sudden you stop doing a lot of things and you're getting more results than ever. But because you enjoy, because the universe and the God brings you the flow, right people, opportunities. 
I choose that way. And it's okay sometimes to go to the crisis moment, right? Those are just postponed decisions. And it's fine because finally at least you're going to see it. Because when we're in illusion and we deny uh, just even looking at different areas in our life and we think, well, you know, I don't need a relationship because I'm okay at work. And now all of a sudden your work becomes your wife. People who you work becomes your, your kids. Your parents becomes your kids. You have a dog. That's it. Why, why would you need relationship? You already have all of those people taking roles, taking places. And your brain just justifies the way of being. It just says, well, that's how I am. That's, that's, that's okay. I'm, I'm good. Life is great. But then sooner or later, it's going to hit you. And it's going to point you into direction. Going to like, you know, like that with a kitten pee somewhere. And you're like trying to push his nose into what he's done. That's what life will do to you. I guarantee you that it's, that's unavoidable so do do the do the work do the work stop reflect rethink and all of a sudden your life becomes way better thank you so much for watching i know it's a lot it's it's longer than my usual vlog I guess I just had so many thoughts and I wanted to share this with you. Please leave your comment down below if you want me to elaborate on a specific topic here or you have questions or maybe you want to actually be um, that person who we can do the diagnostic or uh, the session where we can discover the areas of your growth, uh, discover the areas of stagnation and those really... Uh, we my program and how I do things is the systematic problem. So program. Yes, there could be goals, there could be dreams, there could be things that, you know, maybe at this point of your life are more important, but it doesn't mean that something else has to be stopped completely and disregarded. Sooner or later, it's going to hit you. So thank you so much. Like this video, because I really want more people to hear this, to have the change to have those tools and you will be a big part of this transformation as well. Thank you so much, Jula Dars, and I see you in the next video.